So we'll take you to the Jubilee House where the president is speaking to the nation on the latest with regards to the COVID-19 pandemic. Students, teachers and non-teaching staff in danger by this reopening. Citing the examples of other countries who have done so and recorded spikes in their infection case counts. I've stated on several occasions that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to the resolution of this pandemic. We have our own unique situation in the country, and we have always taken that into account in dealing with this disease, much as we are prepared to learn from the examples of others. Fellow Ghanaians, over the last three months, every aspect of our national life has been affected by this virus. We've had to take deliberate steps to ensure that our society, in the face of the pandemic, is able to function and continues to strive to deliver the results of progress, prosperity, and development for which we all yearn with this disease, much as we are prepared to learn from the examples of others. Fellow Ghanaians, over the last three months, every aspect of our national life has been affected by this virus. We've had to take deliberate steps to ensure that our society, in the face of the pandemic, is able to function and continues to strive to deliver the results of progress, prosperity, and development for which we all year saving lives, jobs, and livelihoods, revitalizing our economy, and safeguarding the future of our country have been at the heart of this endeavor. We cannot say that because of the pandemic, we're no longer interested in issues of social justice, such as education and health. Education, indeed, is the key to the future of our country. The quality of education that our educational institutions produce ultimately will determine the success or otherwise of our nation. We therefore have to find a way of guaranteeing the prospects of the generation of young people who are the objects of education today and who represent our future. We have to do everything within our power to protect their potential and thereby help preserve our future. We cannot afford to let the pandemic undermine our chances for survival and progress. We have to confront our present and future with confidence, knowing fully well that we must remain at all times vigilant and careful. So from tomorrow, operating with half the class size, final year students will begin a six-week period of learning to finish their respective programs. Subsequently, for a period of four weeks, they will sit for their ex exit examinations. It must be put on record that some final year students will not be returning to school, as some of them through virtual means, have already sat their exit examinations. Prior to their return to school, government, through the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service, has ensured that all tertiary institutions, public and private, have been disinfected. Universities, with their own hospitals and clinics, have been equipped with the necessary personal protective equipment and have isolation centers to deal with any positive cases. All other institutions, without their own clinics and hospitals, have been mapped to health facilities. There will be no mass gatherings and no sporting activities. Religious activities under the new protocols will be permitted. Social distancing 
and the wearing of face masks must it become the norm on campus. To aid in this effort, a total of 600,000 face marks has been distributed to the tertiary institutions. This is to enable every student, teaching and non-teaching staff, to have three use reusable face masks. In addition to this, 1,700 Veronica buckets, 200,000 liters of hand sanitizers, 3,400 liters of liquid soap and 900 thermometer guns have been distributed. With the transportation and delivery of these items being overseen by the special logistics team of the government committee, chaired by the sagacious, experienced politician, the senior minister, Honorable Yawa Safumafu, and is supervising the reopening of the school. I met with the vice chancellors of the universities, both public and private, last Tuesday, who pledged that they would cooperate to ensure that this exercise is effectively undertaken. And I thank them very much for their cooperation. Our intention is to secure the lives of the nearly 200,000 students, lecturers, and non-teaching staff who will be returning to campus from tomorrow, and I appeal to them also to do their bit to help us succeed. I urge them to adhere to enhanced personal hygiene and social distancing protocols, wash their hands with soap under running water, refrain from shaking hands, and wear their masks to, in, and from the lecture halls and on the campus generally. Fellow Ghanaians, I have to address a matter which has to deal with our case count, especially in recent weeks, and which has given cause for anxiety. The increase in numbers indicates that the virus has spread and continues to spread. We have to bear in mind at all times that the more people we test for the virus, the more people we are likely to discover as positive and thus have the opportunity to isolate and treat them. If we do not test people for the virus, we will not find the persons who are positive, let alone isolate them from the population and treat them and prevent them from spreading the virus. For example, the total number of tests that we have conducted in Ghana with a population of 31 million, 254,331, is one of the highest on the African continent. Furthermore, many countries in the world, including several of the developed economies, are not implementing a policy of enhanced contact tracing, and this makes our data qualitatively different and more effective in the fight against COVID-19. Indeed, the success of our tracing, testing, and treating will lead, in the end, to a reduction in the number of cases. That is what we're working for. Understandably, much focus has been placed on the rise in the total number of confirmed cases. As at midnight of 13th June, the total number of positives cumulatively stands at 11,964. Out of the 254,331 tests conducted, we have a total of 4,258 patients who have fully recovered, have been discharged, and are now free of the virus. So our scrutiny, in effect, must be on the number of active cases, i.e. people who remain on our books as still positive. Hence, as things stand now, the total number of people with the virus, that is active cases from our tests, 
is 7,652. Our positivity rate, i.e. the ratio of positive cases to total tests conducted, stands at 4.7%. In our hospitals and isolation centers, we currently have 13 persons severely ill, six persons critically ill, with three persons on ventilators. Mercifully for us, by the grace of God, the number of COVID-19 related deaths, sad though each death is, continues to remain very low, one of the lowest in Africa and the world. With 54 deaths currently reported by the Ghana Health Service thus far in Ghana, the ratio of deaths to positive cases stands at 0.4%, compared to the global average of 5.5% and the African average of 2.6%. The number of severe and critically ill also continues to be low. I am relating all these figures not to engender any false feel-good factor, but as statements of fact that must provide the context for us when we examine our figures. If indeed we are to be guided by the data, then we must look at the data in all its ramifications, not just one particular aspect of them. That is the proper way to do justice to the data. I'm thus in no way suggesting that we should let our guard down for many in the handling of this pandemic. On the contrary, as we begin to ease the restrictions, we must be even more disciplined in our adherence to the personal hygiene and social distancing measures we have become accustomed to. We must keep fit and we must continue to eat our local foods to boost our immune systems. This is how we can prevent our healthcare services and our heroic healthcare workers from being overwhelmed due to an increase in demand for hospital care. Nevertheless, I implore you to pay attention to your health. When you begin to experience symptoms such as fever, persistent cough, bodily pains, loss of taste and smell, and difficulty in breathing, seek immediate medical attention at the nearest health facilities. I remain concerned about the stigma associated with this disease. Stories of persons who have recovered from this disease and being shunned by their own relatives and communities are a source of considerable worry to me because they undermine our efforts to fight it. There is nothing shameful about testing positive. We do not have to lose our sense of community because of this pandemic. Government, through the Ghana Health Service, continues to monitor on a daily basis the spread of the virus and has benchmarks of health outcomes which define the mitigation measures that must be pursued to curb the spread of the disease and enable us to reassess the easing of restrictions. It is important for me to remind residents of the greater Accra and Ashanti regions where the great majority of cases have been recorded and in the western and central regions where we're seeing an increase in infection cases to continue to adhere strictly to the social distancing and enhanced hygiene protocols announced. With the doctors and scientists telling us that the virus is transmitted from human contact through talking, singing, coughing, and sneezing, which results in sending droplets of the virus from one person to another. Residents of these four regions, and indeed all Ghanaians, must remember 
that the wearing of masks is now mandatory. Leaving our homes without a face mask or face covering on is an offense. The police have been instructed to enforce this directive, which is the subject of an executive instrument. Let me repeat, our survival is in our own hands. If we are lax and inattentive, we will continue to have serious challenges with the virus. If we are mindful and self-disciplined, we have it in us to defeat this pandemic and help return our lives to normalcy. I appeal to each and every one of you for your help in this regard. That is the surest way to realizing our collective vision of building a new Ghanaian civilization where the rule of law is not a slogan, but a directive principle of state development where we deliver social and economic transformation that has a meaningful impact on the lives of all of our people, where a strong and vibrant economy creates jobs for the masses of our young people and in the process creates a society of opportunities and aspirations for all, where we are no longer pawns nor victims of the world order, and where the vision of our founding fathers of a free, progressive, and prosperous Ghana is attained. Let us together rise to the occasion and fulfill our common destiny. We can do it. And you know, Besanko school, a coach on Sohia at Twatu University for the Kochna SHS three, the SHS two go track for is Beko Ochana Nawatri JS three for also Beko Nawatria Idiso. Oh, forty two. Me Mamunina Tia CS. Is she here? Biara a was a ye ye, the boy a man who buy a buy a ye. Miss Ramo, any a ma, and cause in this is a ya a dear be boy a who buy no a so. No young couple and daroma. In to me a ye sire ye in free and so. And you may may catch a war or be fair a bag with school na by a school na magma. I mean, like by Wolue. University B by a war. The SHS 3, SHS 2 go track B by a was a Uchi. JSHS 3 B by a school, Uchi and Yumi. Miss Moore, in your fair and we are. What took the journey fair Ujuba? You walk our bar, me a barha will be a fair higher school, the Saniko Behi. Me panify. Walker will be a fair abomodi, me ni be a fair ni care. Ye yano, me no drumo. Walker neke hilane, a jewante. In conclusion, fellow Ghanaians, permit me to pay brief tribute to the memory of an old and valiant colleague in the struggle of the new patriotic party and in the work of the Akufuado government, the mayor of Sekendi Takradi Metropolis, the chief executive of the Sekendi Takradi Metropolitan Assembly, Honorable K.K. Sam, Eja Sam to me and many, whose efforts in enforcing social distancing protocols of the Sekendi and Takradi markets were recently highly commended by me, and who sadly passed away on Friday as a result of a COVID-19 related death. May his soul rest in perfect peace in the bosom of the Almighty until the last day of the resurrection when we shall all meet again. Let us also wish our hard-working Minister for Health, 
Honorable Kwekwanji Maimenu, MP for Doma Central, a speedy recovery from the virus which he contracted in the line of duty and is in a stable condition. May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. So that's interesting, at least a confirmation of the health minister having contracted the virus, which we carried yesterday. A very shocking one, too. I mean, um, there, was, there were some denials, mm -hmm. and we're not sure if indeed the journalist who claimed she spoke to Ajima Menu really did, and Ajima Menu said that he was not positive and that he was just resting, because that has actually subjected him to public ridicule, and it's, and it's pathetic what people are doing on social media against the Minister for Health. If it indeed is true, which has just been confirmed now by the President, that the Minister had had COVID-19 as of last week, like we reported yesterday, mm. I think the government has done itself in. What is so wrong with our Minister for Health coming to say that we have COVID or I have COVID? The Prime Minister of one of the most powerful countries of the world, Boris Johnson, announced to us that he had COVID. When Boris Johnson was taken to ICU, which is critical, we were told. Mm -hmm. Indeed, he himself did a video and told us, I, am, I can't believe for the life of me why they had to conceal this particular thing. And wait, f more than 24 hours after we published this story, for the president to come and make the announcement. I think we, we, we have a problem with revelation of the COVID-19. And we are has fighting stigma? Not, which is what is leading to the stigmatization we're seeing. Because remember, two or three weeks ago, we had the same issue with Parliament, where it came out that a couple of people had been tested positive. Mm -hmm. At the time, we were told that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. Last week, we had the parliamentarians complaining that people who had been tested positive, which earlier we were told were not true, were now not self-isolating. I don't see why it's a big deal to say I have COVID-19. When we were going to report our first case in this country, it was Kwekwa Jima Menu, the Doma Central MP, the Minister for Health, who did a late night press conference flanked by the Minister for Information. They announced to us that two individuals had tested positive. Mm -hmm. They did not give us a name. Indeed, there has always been a policy not to give names, and we respect that because they are people's privacy. You need to protect their privacy. But he's a privacy. public officer. Yes. And if Ajiman Menu had tweeted yesterday, or if he had called a press conference, or did a short video to say, hello, Ghanaians, I have tested positive, but I'm confident of our health system. That I'm I confident that I would be fine. be fine. It gives people some sort of morale. It gives people vim in the local That fence. this is real. Anybody can get it, even a health minister. And exactly. it's okay exactly. to have the virus. Exactly. But if we are, after we did that story, a journalist claims I was talking to him, and he says he doesn't have COVID. Other people said he had diabetes, and then they said he said he's, at, he's resting at UGMC. Is UGMC a restaurant or a restroom? Anyway, we'll, we'll leave it at that. At least it's been confirmed. Again, the Takradi MCE, mm. he died old on Friday. Yeah. We are now hearing for the first time that this is what, what he died of, COVID-19. Again, this is a man who's been very forceful in the fight against mm -hmm, COVID. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating him. The Western yeah. Regional Minister said we should emulate his work and so on. Tell us that he's a hero of the fight and he died fighting, and we'll celebrate him. But if you conceal the information, it's terrible. and doesn't do any good for the and, government and, and that, everybody. And that increases the stigmatization we are all fighting. So we hope that this sends a good signal across really? that it's okay, I mean, if you are diagnosed with COVID-19, mm -hmm. if you take care of yourself, go by the rules and regulations of what the medical team that will be taking care of you do, you should be fine. And we should stop, you know, concealing and treating people who have contracted it as if they are, you know, we are better than them. Yeah, indeed. It's, a, it's, a, it's an unfortunate one. I like that the president spoke to us, but that still end is, is painful that they had to take the president to come make this announcement. But of course, there's an announcement and we have to move forward. So if okay. you're out there, just protect yourself. Be careful. If even the Minister of Health, who sits on top of Ghana's health structure, is not safe or immune to the virus, then you and I ought to be careful.
Okay, so we have to practice the safety protocols and all that as advised by the president and the medical teams we have in the country. Let's still stay with the COVID-19 um, and look at tomorrow, Monday, and preparations towards uh, the reopening of schools for uh, final year students and management of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology assure that it will ensure all COVID-19 safety protocols are adhered to as it is set to reopen on Monday. According to the university, they are expecting only about 1,500 out of the about 13,000 final year students, as most of them are supposed to complete their courses online, except for those who are pursuing human centers, pro centered programs with practical left. Now, Sudin so uses Edward Opoma for Hasbro in this report. According to the university authorities, students who are supposed to report to campus include medical students in fifth and sixth years, final year nursing, midwifery, pharmacy, veterinary medicine, and those pursuing optometry. They are supposed to use three weeks to complete their courses for the semester. Students offering other programs have been asked to complete their courses online, except for those who are unable to take advantage of the online platform, whose special arrangements would be made for them to stay on campus. Dr. Daniel Norris Beckwin is the university relations officer. The total number of students who are in the final year a number of about 13,000, out of which we are expecting about 1,500 maximum of students to report to campus. Dr. Daniel Norris Beckwin outlines measures being put in place by the university to ensure that all COVID-19 safety protocols are strictly adhered to. We have fumigated the rooms, We've, we have cleaned the place, and we intend to house each student in one room because of social distancing. And so that is the arrangement. Uh, we have also provided face or nose mask to the various halls of residence where we are going to house these students. And so once they report, there will be screening. The medical team will screen them, and after which they will be ushered into their various halls of residence. And then we've also made arrangements to make provide hand sanitizers, hand washing uh, materials at the various halls of residence. The university says for undergraduate students, they are expected to submit their thesis to their supervisors online for assessment to be made. On the part of postgraduate students, Master of Science final year students will not be required to have their defense, while MPhil and PhD students will have their defense via Zoom. With respect to students' elections, especially the Students' Representative Council, SRC, and the Graduate Students' Association of Ghana, GRASAC elections, all processes have been put on hold for final year international students pursuing human-centered programs but are currently out of the country, the university says they are making arrangements with government to ensure they are able to return to complete their courseworks but will be forced to make special arrangements for them if they are unsuccessful. Following the closure of schools as part of measures by government to stem the spread of COVID-19, many foreign students stayed on campus. According to the president of the International Students Association, it has not been easy for them since they initially wanted to go back home. He however says the support from the university has made their stay quite successful. Even though um, over time worries have been raised concerning I think um, immediately they closed um, or shut the borders. That was when we actually had lots of complaints from students as well as parents, you see. Because, I mean, they had no idea what was going on, you understand, and then they really wanted a lot of answers, I can tell you. But, I mean, over time, university management has tried to reduce the effect of the whole situation. They've always been here, you see, to address our complaints, our issues and concerns. From the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology campus here in Kumase, I'm Edward upon Marfo for City News.
You know, ahead of the reopening of the universities for final year students across the country, heads of various institutions in the central region have indicated their preparedness towards welcoming final year students on Monday, June 15. They say necessary precautions have been put in place to ensure a safe environment for academic work. City News' Calvin Stetcher has more. President Akufuado, in his 10th address, stated government's intentions to allow final year students across the country to get back to school to write their final exams. The move is also to prepare safe ground for first and second year students to also resume after the final year students complete their exams. Institutions like CTFM and TV as part of their corporate social responsibility partnered waste management company Zoom Lion to disinfect some universities across the country. However, the universities say they have also made plans to welcome final year students. At the University of Cape Coast, Major Retired Kofi Ba Bentum, head of public affairs of the university, tells City News about the arrangements they have made towards welcoming the final years. You cannot come back to campus without a mask. And then there will be limited movement. So you cannot move from one hall to the other hall. And then we are making sure that we get them two students to a room. And all those in the dive hall, as we call it, outside the university campus, we are also making sure that they come back to campus and stay on campus for the rest of the period. Provost of the College of Distance Education at the University of Cape Coast, Professor Isaac Galliong, caution students on the proper way of wearing nose mask on campus to prevent the spread of the virus. We've advised uh, the vice chancellor as that uh, colleges, faculties and departments will provide face masks for their staff. So we have done that and that is supposed to ensure that they are safe. So when students come, they are going to, we are going to ensure that they wear face masks we work with the university health service. We also work with the teaching hospital. And there's a team monitoring and ensuring that uh, anybody who shows the symptoms are tested. We are collaborating to ensure that we contain this virus. Some universities have reduced their staff strength, making way for essential staff only to be at work. Professor Andy Ofori Brekrang Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of Education, Winneba, says national service persons and non essential staff will be made to proceed on leave to make way for essential staff only. We have essential staff, our only staff that we have in our offices. Almost everybody, especially national service personnel, have been asked to go on leave. Major offices are keeping not more than one or two staff in place. And the request for staff to proceed on leave has also been rolled over. So here yeah, we're doing our part. And for instance, today, uh, uh, even if you look at management, we come to office only when it is necessary. We are operating with only one staff in many of the offices. The finance department, which used to have one of our largest staff, is uh, the largest staff, is operating with only about two or three uh, staff on emergency and essential business. So we are doing a lot on our part to make sure that we also help uh, contain the spread of us. For the Jumaku campus of the University of Education, the situation was not different as they were also ready to welcome students. Professor Charles Uwewe is the dean of the Faculty of Languages. It shows, like I said, how prepared we are to receive the, the students because most of the students are coming in with some apprehension whether the place will be good for them or whether it's good for them to stay in the house. But we are getting prepared for them. You're still watching the City Newsroom when we return as the new patriotic party prepares for its parliamentary primaries, aspirants and delegates share their expectations. We have that story and more. Don't go away.
Unlock Banking with Biometrics. Now you can access the APSA mobile banking app using your fingerprint or facial recognition. Download today. That's Africanacity. That's APSA. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back. Now, it is a constituency that is tipped to see one of the hottest contests in the coming internal elections of the ruling New Patriotic Party. This is because aspirants seeking to represent the Bantsma constituency in Parliament are letting no stone unturned as the day of the primaries draws closer. As part of the build up to the primaries on June 20, City News' Ashanti Regional Correspondent Hafiz Tijani takes a look at how events are shaping up in the Bantsma constituency. Bantsma constituency is one of the strongholds of the ruling new patriotic party in the Ashanti region. Over the years, votes by inhabitants here have seen the MPP lead other political parties, including its biggest opponent, the National Democratic Congress, in every general elections. The contest is between a sitting member of parliament for the area and a deputy chief of staff at the presidency. The MP, Daniel Ochem Abwaje, is also government spokesperson on finance in Ghana's parliament, while his contender, Francis Asensobwachi, has played a rising role in the history of the party. The aspirants are making frantic efforts to reach out to deciders of their victory. The over 500 delegates in the area and could not make time for an interview for this report. Nonetheless, their supporters are doing the talking for them. First, supporters of Daniel Ochem Abwaji. Daniel Ochem Abwaji is a very active um, MP and then he is able to unite with everybody, uh, no matter uh, how you are is able to unite all of us. So that's why I'm saying that uh, Daniel Ochema Bwaje is the right person to choose. I have two months. I last four years, man, two months. Because of the entire month, I have two months. I have two MPB. 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 Supporters of Asensu Bwachi also spoke to us. If any MP trying to come and win this election, we delegates, we have to know that we are going to take a trust person, the one who is going to take us to a, a place that we have never there before. So we all decided that um, Chief Asensu Bwachi is coming. The one that um, the MP, the old MP, Ochama Bwachi, we all know that he is an ex whether we like it or not, he's an ex-MP. And we have a current man who is coming to help us, especially the delegates. And another especially, we women. Because um, when you come to um, delegate people, especially the women people, we are so precious. And we are the one who gave birth. 
So if I send Supache, um take my daughter to any other place or give him or her a job, I'll be happy. Me pa show you me free set of bits me jim kun him. I knew when you know who I soon you not say. Hey, honorable, honorable chief, I said so. Watch it. I didn't hear. Me pa show bedri. Just say you're not a bad man. Onya mayo. Na and you're my why you're a bad man. Me kase me ka and you're free hanko. The biya me kase. Onya jene nu akoye ni. I'm yes to you. Why hanke chief and we pay you you. And I say somewhere last year, February no. Oh yeah. Fatima, women swing. Eh ho, ena mini huno. Ye kama kuma ni se me devote mi huno edi amano. Daniel Ochem Abwaji unseated Henry Kobina Kokofu in the party's 2016 primaries to become the MP for the Bantima constituency. Francis Asenso Bwachi, who is also seeking to unseat the current MP, now has the full backing of Mr. Kobina Kokofu. The grounds are so solid. Uh, the, the delegates are yearning for him. And the entire populace, I mean the constituents of Bantama, uh, the larger grouping, they are asking for him to uh, assume the MP ship this time round. MPP chairman for Bantama constituency spoke about preparations ahead of the main exercise. No place is going to go beyond um, an electoral area, and the electoral area has a maximum people of about 70. So, 70 people in an area, and all the precautionary things that we have to do, we are doing. Um, we have. Um, we have brought the, the various um, buckets that we need to bring. We have sanitizers and we are getting everything in place to keep everybody who is going to be voting very safe. The Bantama constituency has been tipped as one of the hottest constituencies in the upcoming internal elections of the new patriotic party. But only the delegates can decide on 20th June when elections are held from the Bantima constituency office of the MPP, half is Tijani for City News. Let's still stay with the MPP primaries because as it prepares for the parliamentary primaries on 20 June, let's turn our attention to Nanton constituency where a certain member of parliament is seeking to retain his seat as the Deputy National Communications Officer Kamel Dean Abdullahi battles to unseat him. The Nanton constituency up until 2016 has been the seat for the National Democratic Congress, where the then incumbent member of parliament, Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed, lost the seat to the opposition New Patriotic Party's Mohammed Kadi Tofiru by a vote margin of 895. The NDC remains strong in the constituency. As such, the NPP needs a strong candidate to consolidate their position. In the upcoming primaries, the incumbent member of parliament, Mohamed Hadi Tofiru, lost horns with the National Deputy Director of Communications for the NPP, Kamaruddin Abdullahi. Nantong is one of the deprived constituencies, and the incumbent member of parliament who hopes to lead the party again says he has brought considerable level of development in the constituency and has won the hearts of his constituents. There is no single community that you can visit in my constituency for the past three years that I represent them, that you can feel me in terms of doing something significant for the people. They believe in me so much. And for them, we, they should, we should continue to do whatever we have to do to bring development to the people. In poverty redu reduction in the area of agri education and health. But what does his opponent, Kamar Din Abdullahi, thinks? That it is not cast in stone that when you are a member of parliament, you are a member of parliament perpetually. I mean, or as it were, permanently. That is not the way it is. The principles guiding their party show that democracy prevails within it. Forms shall be, if you like, nomination forms shall be open, people shall apply, and come forward to see whether or not the performance of the new patriotic party 
empty them is indeed what they want. And if not, if the candidate is not the person who is doing what is right for them, then of course they will choose someone else. So I am guided by such principles and the party has actually shown that such principles exist. And I'm also guided by the fact that indeed as somebody who is from the area and being on the ground, knowing what is happening, then of course there are a lot to be done or there's a lot to be done in terms of representation of the people in parliament. How easy will it be for the incumbent member of parliament to represent the constituency for the second time? This is the feeling, it's the people. Kamal is our own. He has done his best for the party. But the timing is the issue. Why wait two weeks to opening of nomination when you are not coming to tell the people that you are what you are? You don't go to the people at the wrong time. So we still have a lot of work to do, which we have started since 2017, to build on our strength, correct our weaknesses, to be able to maintain the system, and for the first time, by the grace of God, win both presidential and parliamentary. This is what we have been doing for the past 2017. What is his opponent bringing differently to ensure the party retains the seat should he win the primaries? Being a representative of the people in parliament, such a service in terms of political communication, driving home or drumming home a point that would ensure development for the people will be an easy job for me. I'm not going to be the armchair member of parliament. I'm going to be somebody who would be very, very, very strong on committees. I'm going to be very strong on the floor of parliament and I'm going to ensure that the legislative job that is going to be given to me to represent the people of Nantong Constituency will indeed be seen and seen to be done so well. And they trust us on your election center to bring you more on June 20 when the NPP goes to the polls. This is City Newsroom on City TV. Stay with us. There's more coming up ahead. extra minutes and extra unlimited calls not just that even our extra data doesn't expire simply dial star 111 hash to bundle now airtel to go life is simple Welcome back. Now, three persons at the Abuabu Extension Number no. One in the Asokre Mampong Municipality of the Ashanti region have sustained degrees of injuries after a trailer vehicle ran into their building. Now, the trailer vehicle is said to have failed its brake and veered off the road. The injured persons have been taken to the hospital. Over 15 persons have also been rendered homeless after their homes were destroyed in the accident. Atakofi Eli is a victim. The, the, the thing that is happening, I'm inside the room. When I saw it, that the, the light is what is flashing, like the, the, the light waves are making fault. But I, I've, I've never seen anything. But when I, I look in my window, I see that the car is what coming there. So when I see, I see the car that is pulling, what is pushing the what the wall. So I try to leave the room of my children. So secondary, when I watch it, the, the block on the other side also what put out inside the room. And after that, we leave ourselves for the room. That I see it as the incident. The room, so the one of the another room get injured, so they send it to a cat, Confanochi. So they, they bring in him that they have been get a, any history of everything. But I see that he, he has something fought in the water, in the lake. And that is what I can see. My children, my one of the baby, uh, six months child, also have a, a, a small injury. 
It's my own chart. So what are you going to do now, now that your building has collapsed? So I don't know better. I, I want to see that the, uh, either, uh, the media or the policemen will come and know how to, they can do. So after that, I, mean, I, I, I make myself that tomorrow I'll go to police station to report and come and take any decision or uh, any uh, this and the thing that to destroy any, the, the building. How can they do it? That is my opinion. Why are you not reporting right now? Of course, but now my wife has been coming from the town, so do I can go now go, go to report it. Second, the police have come here, but in myself, I've never go to police station to report it. Well, that's it for today's edition of the City Newsroom. Log on to our website, citynewsroom.com. We have more stories there. Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube for more exclusive video contents from City TV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store and keep updated on the go. You can also watch City TV on DSTV channel 363 and Go TV channel 182. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. And mine is Umaru Sandamado. Thank you for watching.